In this case study, we look at the links between coastal fisheries and climate change in Ghana, as there has been little work to date, despite the vulnerability of this sector to climate change. Ghana's coastal fisheries are affected by changes in sea temperature, which alters nutrient upwelling from deep sea to surface. This has changed fish breeding patterns and significantly reduced the number of fish in the ocean. As a direct impact of reduced fish stocks, local people in coastal communities are having to find alternative ways to make a living. Some people have turned to cutting down the mangrove, which has consequences for the environment. The coastal fisheries sector is also a contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, mainly through boats burning engine fuel. This applies to both large-scale industrial fleets and smaller artisanal fishermen. At the start of this project, the research team interviewed policymakers, civil society organizations, and researchers with expertise in coastal fisheries. They also went to the local community of Vanyanwi in the coastal region of Keta to hear the local people's opinions of the issues. Have association with the fishermen. I bought them a fish fish net. One day, the fish trawler took all away. Our type of fishing is obsolete. We just embark. We look around whether we can see fish. We don't see fish. We come back. 14th century type of fishing is what we're still engaging. But these industrial fleets are there 24/7, January to December. What is going on? Formerly, there's no mangrove farming in this community. When the, the fishing activity is down now, they go to the mangrove farming. Mangrove grow up to the age of 30, 40, thereabouts. It help in preventing storms, uh, but they frequently go into it and then cut it down at the early stage to sell as a firewood. Mangroves serve as a habitat for fish, so the, the fish has no place to hide themselves and then breed. Following this initial research phase, the team reflected on the information and evidence it gathered on the effects of climate change on Ghana's coastal fisheries. From this, they identified two policy interventions to emerge from the research with overlapping benefits for climate adaptation, climate mitigation, and development issues, therefore providing a triple win. These policy interventions were reductions in fuel subsidies to small-scale fishing boats and enhanced mangrove protection. To further explore the potential of these two interventions, the team organized a learning event in Accra with key actors and conducted more interviews in Keta. People's opinions were varied and sometimes conflicting, especially around the intervention aimed to reduce government subsidies on fishing boat fuel, known as premix, to fishermen with small motorized boats. <laughs> Most of the problems emanate from the National Premix Office itself. Therefore, we are calling for the abolition of uh, the National Premix Committee. Ordinary fishermen should have access, but then they don't get because you have big and powerful people along the line who, of course, are also politically connected. So they go with their huge containers and they collect. We are pushing government to register all the canoes so that the canoes once registered with their numbers they can go to the landing beach to buy the uh, premise like the uh, ordinary car buys at the fuel dump people's opinion on the policy intervention to better protect and manage mangrove forests was also complex but largely in agreement on key issues 
the issue of the mangrove is considered as a resource or as a commodity. Yeah, these are, for me, these are the issues that is driving the disappearance of the mangrove. With their bylaws, that can help them to preserve the wetland or the mangrove or the the, the, the natural resources. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is difficult since uh, a hungry man is an angry man. This project has shown us that these interventions are highly political and result in clear winners and losers. This was especially clear with reducing premix fuel subsidies, which if implemented, would be likely to reduce people's livelihood options and provoke conflict. The team found that within Ghana's coastal fisheries, development issues, which have an obvious and direct impact on poverty and hunger, are prioritized over related climate issues. Although the links to climate change are understood by some, for many they are not as clear or as urgent. The most urgent issue for people along the coast is finding sustainable options for making a living that replace or supplement their fishing-related activities. Also, the governance of natural resources, such as fish stocks and mangrove, is seen to be lacking and in need of urgent attention. The project concludes for this context. It may be more appropriate to identify development policies that provide climate co-benefits. In doing so, reforms can be prioritized so that first and foremost, they provide poor people with relevant assistance to improve their lives and livelihoods in a changing climate.